Now, after this conference, if you have to rewrite guns, germs, and steel, are there new items you want to add? Now, because the 20th anniversary of the publication of Guns, Germs, and Steel um, will be next year, my American publisher and I have already agreed that next year we will produce a new edition of Guns, Germs, and Steel. But most of what I said in Guns, Germs, and Steel is basically correct. We have some more details that enrich the picture. So I'm not going to rewrite the book. Instead, I'll provide a new preface. And the preface will discuss some interesting developments. That's the subject that I'll revisit in the new edition of Guns, Germs, and Steel to be published next March. Maybe you should call it now Guns, Germs, Steel, and Rice, or something. <laughs> Grain, or something. Most of us have been talking about how human species became the, this powerful uh, entity in, on, on, on Earth. It is what we call agricultural revolution, right? Agricultural revolution was the most important development in the last 15,000 years of human history. But once you got, once you got language, all family groups, a scene like this for Neanderthals would have been impossible. Um, but once you have speech, then you can use speech not only to attract the wife or to attract a husband, but you can use speech to talk to a thousand people, to share ideas. You can talk about AI and you talk, talk about bio, and you can enlist people to share your ideas. So with speech, you can start to form large human groups. Professor Harari, I had a discussion with him just like this uh, when he came. Uh, he claimed that in 100 years or 200 years, uh, human species will disappear because of AI's uh, influence. My view would be close to yours. The question is whether the human species will destroy itself 30 years from now. One is the problem of consuming environmental resources. Problem number two is inequality around the world. Now in this globalized world, when there are desperately poor people, they have their opportunity to express their anger, for example, by supporting terrorists, by supporting terrorists, or by participating in unstoppable streams of immigration. And as long as there's inequality around the world, so the biggest challenge is not to write your will, the biggest challenge is to contribute to developing a sustainable world with the Many scholars were predicting that uh, China will become the superpower. China will be stronger than the USA and all that, but in collapse, you said China may not become that way because Chinese, uh, China is lurching too much. Now, it's, it's been what, more than 10 years. Having seen what China is doing now, would you say the same thing, or has it changed? My view on that matter is that a country that starts poor can have a high growth rate. It's much easier, I think, not in the foreseeable future for two reasons. China suffers from geographic disadvantages and historic disadvantages, which are hard to overcome. China is geographically unified. I would say almost fatal disadvantage of China is that its history is 2,236 years of dictatorship. In a democracy, the people vote, the people feel responsible for the government. In a country in which the people don't vote, or which their vote makes no difference, the people do not have a responsibility for the government, and therefore if the government does something bad, then that's not going to happen immediately. And unless China changes its geography, China is not going to be 